Okay, it started. Anyway, to let you know how to do your own, you'll need this information, and this information will help you. Uh, you might want to stop and look them up. This is what it looks like when it's finished. Well, that's what the prototype looked like. The one that's in the vehicle has a pot in here, uh, indicated by this pot right here. To trim this to my maximum voltage, I want the uh, thing to go to. Okay, for this, this is a fully functional pot. This one here, this this thing can go from zero, or actually, it can go to nine. 0.9 volts up to 5 volts with this pot. This is a 1.8 K resistor which limits it to 5 volts. Now inside here is a 1.8 and a 10 K trim resistor. One of those little bitty ones. More like one of the ones that uh, is used right in here on zero fossil fuels unit. This is a control unit for zero fossil fuel. This is what one looks like installed, one of mine. As you can tell, it's one of my own configurations. I don't screw mine in, I just RTV them to the case. It's a lot easier than a bunch of screws, and it doesn't weigh that much anyway. He likes to screw his in, so whatever. Anyway, big heat sink, massive heat sink, massive fan, ground, in, out. The case is the ground too. Uh, this big wire in here is just uh, like a number 10 house wire. One of them stripped out. That's what this is for the output. The input is going right here to all three of the uh, connections right here through this inductor. You have to have a high powered inductor to, to take the amperage. And then your positive and negative, these are 16 volt or maybe 25 volt if you want them. I'm using, I think, 16 volt. These are only 6.3 volt due to the fact that the maximum is going to be 5 volts. So you don't need high voltage ones, just a row of caps. And over here, a row of another caps. Okay, so you can see that. Now, I don't know if you can see the color. Here's the green. That's your grounds. All these are grounds. All these are power out. These are power in. I've got them listed here in red, blue, and green. I don't know if you can see the colors very good. 1.8K, 10K. 1K with a switch. This is for when the uh, unit is hot. Like when you stop at a store and go in for a few minutes and get something. Whoops. I'm trying to get an ant off. I'm outside. Okay. You have to flip the switch because it's going to overpower the unit otherwise. The hot water, okay, you're going to, you're going to stop. Everything's going to be sitting there and the engine going to heat all the water up and everything. And because of that, it's going to draw more amps. So you don't want it to over, overrun it. Go over the 40 amps it's supposed to put out because it could burn out the unit. Now, flip the switch. Okay, get on the road again, starts cooling down, flip the switch back, get it around 80 amps. After you've been on the road for a little bit and it stabilizes, you don't have to adjust it very much. Anyway, it depends upon the shunt you're using, but you'll need a shunt for your meter and you'll need an isolated power supply for your meter, which you saw in one of the other videos. Now. I haven't built it yet, but I've already figured out the wiring is different for the 60 amp. The 60 amp, if you can see it, and the paperwork for the 60 amp is right here, power one. It's a whole bunch of paperwork. If you read through it, you can figure it out if you're an electrical engineer. But for the simple person, power these two inputs power out the blue ones ground the green ones okay you're going to need a 20k and a 10k resistor for trimming this 
to maximum. This only goes to 2.75 volts. So you have to adjust that to 2.75 volts and no more. Okay, 2K on this one, 5K there. This one here, sorry I didn't mention it, 1K and a 2K adjustable. This is a 10 turn pot. Looks like this one. Okay? You can actually turn it a whole bunch of times. It's 10 turn. So it's very adjustable. So you need a 5K for this one and a 2K resistor to turn on and off for your heat when you stop. You'll need to you're going to drop the amperage down when it turns on is what you're doing with this resistor. What happens? The water's going to get hot. It's going to draw more current. This keeps it from going over. Now after the thing cools down a little bit, you get on the road, it cools down, it circulates a little bit, then you can crank it back up. Okay, that's all I got to tell you. Bye for now.